Hi, this is Uriah Heep, and you're watching Raw Power. I mean, we're a lot more than five guys getting to play music, and we cut very deep as friends and mates and everything, you know. And uh, we don't really feel that we've got to go out there and, and prove and prove and prove all the time, you know what I mean? I think, I think you, a lot of the young bands lose a bit of the message of what it's all about, you know, by um, taking themselves a bit too seriously, you know what I mean? And, and a bit too posy and too, a bit too this and that and the other, you know. There's a lot of competition out there for them as well, I think, you know, so that's why they do it, you know, to, to get sure the press, yeah, you know. Yeah. Whereas we, we're an older band, we really don't look for competition, do we? Don't, no, don't we just old, go out there and enjoy ourselves, against them, you, know. you know. We just go and do it. <laughs> Back in the 70s, you see, you had like Deep Purple, Les Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Your Heap and stuff. We were all signed to like five album deals. And so, in other words, the record company would grow with you, you know, and develop with you. Um, which is, and, I mean, just look at our history, you know, I mean, our first album was like very, very, very humble, which is the soft side of us, an acoustic side, and the heavy side, which would be a gypsy. Um, and then you'll, you'll go into um, our second album, we had a 27-piece brass section on the... A 20 minute number you know what i mean you're allowed to experiment and grow and by look at yourself we found our feet and we wanted to be a rock band you know highlights for for me i reckon were probably when we we hit it really big in america which was great because in those days it was an exciting time you know we were doing 20,000 seaters a night and in america you can play that 365 days a year and never you know cover the same area twice so i mean that's how huge it is and we were, we were hugely successful out there and we got all the platinum albums gold albums all the rest of it you know but then you get so many years down the line, you get something unique like the Moscow thing, you know, which we're really bored with right now because, you know, people just think we go to the Eastern Bloc and play, but we don't, you know. We went to one Eastern Bloc country last year um, only. But, I mean, it's only because, you know, our profile got a bit higher because of the Moscow thing. But that, that was a thrill to be the first to actually go out there and, and crack that market. Because, um, you know, when you start playing guitar, when I started playing guitar as a kid in Walthamstow in the bedroom, you never think, you know, living above a butcher shop, you never think you can actually go to Russia you know, and play music, you know, to 180,000 people. So I mean, there's many thrills along the way. Basically, I mean, the band's creative juices are always running, you know, the tap's always on, you know. Um, it could be from a sound check or anything, a riff, and oh, that's good, mate, and then put it down on tape and we'll work on it later, and, and in the bus or anything, you know. Um, it just comes from everywhere, and that's a good thing about the band, I think that's why we're still about, because what we keep doing, on album after album is getting ourselves going, you know, and get ourselves off as well, you know, and we get excited by it and hopefully that gets over to everyone else. We wanted Richard Dodd originally, um, who did Raging Silence, to continue on Different World. But he, uh, with his commitments in Los Angeles with the Jeff Lynn and Travelling Wilburys, um, we waited for about four months and couldn't wait any longer, you know, because we wanted to get in the studio. And basically I said to Richard, well, okay, if you can't do it, mate, who, you know, who do you suggest? And he says, well, I'll be honest with you, I think Trevor. I've put him up for the job. As long as you get a good engineer, you'll come out with the goods. And I said, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What do you base that on, you know? And he said, well, a lot of what happened with Raging Silence um, were sort of Trevor's ideas that he took quietly <laughs> without letting us know. And um, so I, said, oh, I asked Trevor, and I said, what do you think about it, mate? And we, we just went for it, apart from picking him up off the floor, you know what I mean? Well, I've had it down once. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want no. to do it originally. But I mean, it shows the strength and character of the band because, you know, um, there's no egos involved, you know, we just put the hat on him and said, there you go, mate, you make the final decisions. This album, Trevor brought more of the um, Hammond organ in, which has always been our trademark, and um, we didn't lean so heavily on synthesizers and stuff like that, and we got more into the playing and the feel of the band. Yeah, we, we went back to how we, we used, used to record in the 70s, early mm. 70s, which was put everything down in one go, you know, mm. as much as possible to get the feel. There's a light, I mean, a lot of bands. We recorded the whole thing on 24 tracks, you know, so it was almost going back in time. So basically what we did is we used technology when we wanted to use it, and we didn't let it use us. 